Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 10, titled Still I Rise. So, this was last night's episode. It was a pretty good episode, and quite a lot of stuff actually went on. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. So without further ado, we're going to go into this episode and break it down bit by bit so chronologically because that's how my notes have gone and so we got quite a lot to talk about in this episode. It must be noted that you should watch my latest videos if you haven't watched them. I've been talking about next week's episode actually in my last video so that is very important so you go check that out because at the moment the CW isn't releasing promos in the next episodes which is very annoying. And obviously I can't do my trailer breakdowns then. The video before this was on next week's episode and I broke down all the little promos that we've got including photos, synopsis and etc. So go check that out, I think that's important after this video. But let's go into the first point. So Nixley is free and she's with Nia. This is where the previous episode ended off. And so Nia will be trapped inside a magical world is what Nixley reveals. And so Nia at this point sees her mother and her mum is like, what have you done, Nia? You've made this deal, this is terrible, and basically Nixie has tricked you, and she seems to be tricking everyone in this episode. Like, even John, she tricks at one point, towards the end, where she pretends that she's been trapped. But it turns out, you know, she is the villain, and only Supergirl knows her, because all the rest of the characters, you have to remember, haven't actually met her. It was only us, the audience, Supergirl and zor -El, who knew about Nixley because they were in the Phantom Zone and when she came out of the Phantom Zone apparently she was trapped and so that's why she needed Nia's help. Okay so the owl from last episode is actually Nia's mother who was sending a sign in her mind and so I thought that was a pretty obvious point but Nia didn't pick up on it last episode however it's revealed in this episode that yes Nia's mum has been sending her messages inside her dreams even though she is gone, and, you know, she's not alive, but she is still there with inside Nia's mind. And so then we cut to this strange PSA video where you have an awkward looking Supergirl and Brainy doing a video that's posted on CatCo and it's shot really weirdly like it's on a green screen, it's pretty obvious and it's just super weird, it's about like eating your greens and eating healthy. And at the start of the video in unison they say, We're your friendly neighborhood super friends. Which is obviously a reference to Spider-Man and his classic saying. But nevertheless it's weird and it does set up what happens later in the episode. And a big part of this episode is not really to do with the villain. Like the Nia stuff is more so to do with the actual story of this whole season. But this stuff that we're getting with Supergirl, with everyone else is mainly to do with you know the theme of the season and talking about like this injustice in the world not injustice in like a supervillain causing injustice but like a societal injustice and so it's strange and it's a weird way to promote this and you know the video was funny and it was very awkward but even Supergirl agrees with this Okay, so let's move on. So Kelly is training with Alex inside the tower, and so somehow she's just able to do jujitsu. She has these cool moves, even though she does struggle throughout the episode, which I think is good that she struggled and she didn't just suddenly snap into a martial arts expert. Although, I have to say, like that one move she did, seems like she knew how to do martial arts, so... Yeah, very interesting. And so at this point, Supergirl comes in, she reminisces about when she trained with Alex back in Season 1, and she talked about like oh the kryptonite and how she was training and so that was a nice callback and then if we move on from this we have Joey and Orlando who return actually Joey's only mentioned this episode Orlando's the only person that actually shows up probably just due to the fact that they couldn't get Joey in or maybe he was in school or something like the actor I mean and so then we get the Midvale alien actually returning Mitch is his name he was actually very good, and they're my two favorite episodes this season was the Midvale episodes. They are by far the best. And so, yeah, the Midvale alien, Mitch, the sidekick, sort of returns. You don't have the main guy, and uh, he has no blue skin. I think this is explained by Brainy, who says, like, he's using some sort of cloaking device, I guess, similar to Brainy. And so he's trying to reopen the menagerie after he's been released by 
Lex's DEO, remember he was captured by the DEO and that was the thing that you saw in those Midvale episodes. And so Nixley is there and she is captured by him but then she tricks him into making him work with him and then they go to capture some crazy scientist who looks all funky and very alien-like and he's from a race of aliens that are good at engineering or something so obviously that is a plus to them but it's actually Nixley who is drawing bait for Supergirl. So let's move on to the next thing. Kara goes after the Ormfell building, this was a big part of this episode to do with the building and uh, Supergirl does an Instagram takeover in order to try and sway people because some people are kind of mixed on the Ormfell building and the council is going to deal with it. Supergirl is very passionate about keeping it for like low income housing and helping those in need like people coming out of prison, like what we have with Orlando in this episode. Obviously he is the centerpiece for what Supergirl is talking about and even Supergirl gets him to help out because she can't do much about it because she is not part of this life and you know she is literally a superhero and she works for Catco in the day she has a very comfortable life and that's for sure so obviously it's very different but she's quite passionate about it and so yeah throughout this episode she's going after the council and trying to stop them from turning the Ormfeld building into like some tech site and so Supergirl is annoyed about all of this and then this season I have to say is much less bothered about the big bads and more so with its themes and some of the themes in this episode was welfare, housing and even a couple of episodes ago when zor was here on the first episode back that was to do with climate change I thought that they handled the climate change one actually very good because it was to do with the story and you had like Kallax going evil and you had this like creature created by you know climate change essentially and so I thought that was really good intertwining the stories, but here I have to say I think that they are putting way too much emphasis on their themes rather than focusing on it being a superhero show. Yes, Supergirl is showing up and yes, she's doing all these things, but she's not really superheroing. She is standing up for people, which is great, but she's not doing much about it until Nixley shows up because Nixley is the big bad figure that we are missing in this episode. Obviously she does come at the end and things do start to change, but I have to say with all the focus on the themes, it's a little bit less interesting because even looking back at the Phantom Zone story, which wasn't the best, but at least we were focusing all on that. Like even in the real world, we had Team Supergirl trying to break Supergirl out of the Phantom Zone and Supergirl was just trying to escape the Phantom Zone and there was no other focus. So I have to say, Maybe it's just a little bit too much. I feel like they are really towing into their themes rather than thinking about their overall story. And one of the best things about these CW superhero shows is their big bads, is their stories to do with heroes versus villains. And I think this episode lacked that. But I'm not to say these last couple of episodes are bad. I thought last episode was okay. It was like pretty good and pretty much the same as this episode. But I definitely think episode 8, when they returned, was by far the best so far out of these three episodes. And so, then we go on and we have Nia, and Nia's mum's words are the best thing, definitely in the episode, I think. So, all of the Nia storyline is very intriguing, she's kind of stuck, and she's trying to break out with the help of her mum, and then her mum disappears at the end of the episode, and she feels like she is a better hero, or she better understands herself. And so Nia's mum's words actually ring very true, and I really like what she was saying. And so there's another cryonuclear bomb, seems like they're always going with like a nuclear bomb or something, or like a cryonuclear bomb. That is the threat because, you know, it's going to level the entirety of National City, and so Supergirl has to stop him, and this is where that story, the story more to do with the themes of welfare and, you know, justice, actually involves the superhero side of stuff because the nuclear bomb is about to go off it sets off and the building starts freezing and it involves all of these characters that weren't involved in the Nixie storyline before but then Supergirl tries to defuse the bomb and she heat visions it she thinks she's destroyed it and everything is good and even Kelly gets like a taste for being a hero 
And so the councilwoman at the end of the episode reveals that she wasn't swayed, but the council believes that they deserve a second chance because of the speech that Supergirl made in this episode and obviously Orlando too. And so Supergirl believes that she has saved the day and the bomb has stopped, but no, it turns out that Nixley is actually the one that caused it and she absorbs that cryonuclear radiation and she somehow gets her powers back because of that. And so I thought that was a really interesting twist. And this is where Nixley meets Supergirl or they reunite for the first time since the Phantom Zone. And so Supergirl realizes all that's been happening is because of Nixley trying to get her powers back and she's here for a reason. So at this point, Nixley traps Supergirl using this cryonuclear radiation thing and she's like frozen on the ground and at that point she says you can only use magic to defeat magic. So Supergirl does the one thing that she can do and she thinks about the one person that she knows that has powers that would probably work on her side and so she screams Mr. Mixus Pilek and so he pops out of nowhere at the hearing of his name and he's going to be in the next episode Mixie in the middle was the title and they're going to be trying to stop Nixley together and obviously he's going to reveal the dark past of Nixley and why she can't be trusted and things like that. Okay, I have a final couple of notes. There was just a few weird things that I wanted to mention. So in regards to the Mitch alien, there was some explanation at the end of the episode why he's returned to a life of crime since he was released. And so apparently the system isn't designed to help them. But in the case of Mitch, Mitch was always just in prison and he never actually settled down on Earth. So he isn't a part of that system. He is someone that, you know, is an outsider. Yes, that's a fact. But he was never part of our society, so why does that really matter to him? Like, the system doesn't even know he exists, and, you know, he isn't a resident of Earth, and I don't think he ever will be. He's just, you know, a guy that flies around in the ship trying to impress his boss, who is not there. But, yeah, I thought that was a weird comment because I don't think Mitch has much to do with Earth as a whole. And yes, he's popped up a couple of times, but he's always in the ship and he's always flying around. And the final note I have is they keep on repeating the same words and it's definitely repetitive. And yes, it's drumming in the idea of its theme, but using the word system so many times or using the word platform. I mean, you could count through the last couple of episodes and they probably use those words about 15 to 20 times each. So it shows a little bit of a lack of creativity by repeating the same words over and over again because I feel like we get it, we understand the theme that you're going for but I think they are doing a not so subtle job of trying to drill it in like I think other shows have done it better where it's more subtle and it's less obvious here it's like yes this is the big thing we're going for and we're just going to keep on repeating these words just to remind yourself that this is what we're going for. So I think Supergirl has definitely handled its themes better in the past so this episode was a bit of a mixed bag although I enjoyed it still. I definitely think episode 8 the climate change episode was much better handled in my opinion. But thank you guys so much for watching this video if you did enjoy it please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications to not miss any videos. You can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.